Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. No sooner than the first game's done, we're back for the second game. We're back for a preview with Rovers kick off their away days with a trip down to Swansea, the furthest one of the season. Of course, it will be for the fans with the first one. But as you can see, I'm joined by Dom. How are we doing, Dom? I'm good, yeah. I'm glad that the Swansea game is coming in the uh, summer months rather than the bleak of the winter. Yeah, I'm used to it being a Wednesday night in, uh, <laughs> in December. So it's a really nice welcome. You know, we we always seem to play them. I think last year we were on TV. And yeah. then years before it's been on Wednesday night. So it's nice to have a 3pm Saturday. Still a long way for Rovers fans. So credit to anyone making the trip down. But we're just going to preview the match. There'll be an insight from a Swansea fan in the middle of it, Luke from Swans cast. So we'll just have a look at the match and see what we think. So we'll start where we always start these shows. And that is the last game. A one that win over QPR. Obviously not the prettiest of wins in terms of such fluid football, but Rovers showed signs of what they want to do under JDT. They showed how the press can work really well. And now we've got to back it up and go for a second win. Imagine six points on the board. So, last game, what do you make of it, Don? Who impressed you? Who, you know, maybe needs a rest? Well, it feels like, you know, we've not won the opening game of the season for 10 years and then we get two in a row. It feels it feels really good to... <laughs> To um to sit here right now saying that we've we've won the opening game of the season again against a, a QPR squad that isn't any any sort of pushovers. I think I put them in my top six for predictions last season. And and to to you know they didn't have a shot on target, which shows yeah. how well we did defensively. You might say we struggled in attack, but in a new system, um you know there's always going to be teething issues. Uh, in terms of who impressed me, the, the obvious ones Buckley until he got his yellow card looked a bit. Like he was a bit nervous after that, um, and then I, Daniel Ayala as well. I, I think at the, at the back he, he looked like a stalwart. He, nothing got past him, did it? So they were the two, I'd say. Yeah, I think Ayala. It's the same thing we've said since he's had, but if he can play thirty games in a season, Rovers' chances of doing something, yeah, you know, in terms of the league tables, much improved. And I'm not getting ahead of myself, but. Ayala and Wharton at the back, I think we've got that solid base for a really good team to have a good push. It's the depth and hopefully these signings, you know, will go into a bit in this. So just give us that extra push and we can have maybe a year better than I thought. I thought we'd be 16th or 15th. I know we could still, but, you know, maybe with a few additions, we can just top off it. A bit like Swansea did last year. Yeah. You know, I spoke to Luke and he said they had the transition year last year and sometimes they were incredible and sometimes they were rubbish. Just like the first game of last season at Ewood, they were shockingly bad. So I think it's positive signs, but we won't go too much into uh, getting ahead of ourselves. We'll move on. Team news. Now, touch wood, we're pretty much the same as we are. You know, we're looking at around the same team. We'll look at a predicted XI later, but two additions since the last game. First one, Tyler Morton. Obviously, Dan, you've been on all the transfer stuff recently, so you've <laughs> discussed Morton. For his own, but do you see him starting Saturday or is he going to be a bench player? Because obviously five subs as well means, you know, we can make changes. I mean, if you bring in Morrison, you, who, who are you going to take out? Buckley or Travis? And they, they, those two seem to be the, the, the key players for us this season. One obviously being the captain and the other seeming to be uh, in a new role that he's sort of took by the scruff of the neck, hasn't he? Uh, so I, I expect him to start on the bench. And uh, hopefully come on. Um, it's a shame for Adam Wharton, obviously, because he nearly came on against QPR, but that's the way things are. Yeah, his debut's not far off, is it? If it's not this year, it's next. Real talent. He'll get his chance at Blackman, I'm convinced he will. And obviously, Sammy Smoddix, is he going to be in the same boat of coming off the bench? I could see, in my eyes, I can see him being a, a 60th minute sub, you know, regardless of the score. If it's a draw, coming on to try and nick a goal if we're losing coming on to try and get the equaliser yeah. or if we're winning either consolidating it or just being that hold up player that we need so do you think Smadix will play or is it again feed him into the team obviously a Hartlepool game coming up where I think we'll see both of them start Morton and Smadix yeah I think out of the two Smadix is the one to start out uh, you know um, 
when we when we're talking about the predicted uh, XI, there's there's going to be a spot free, I think, in the front four because they're all fluid, aren't they? And there's so much spaces available throughout the season, but um, I think it's just a bit too early for him right now. Uh, it, it it would be a little bit naive to maybe change from a winning squad, but I wouldn't be disappointed if he if we saw at two p.m. that he was starting in the XI. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, two additions. We had a couple of kids on the bench the other day, so it's yeah, it's not too much to change in terms of putting them on the bench. So we'll take a look at Swansea before we hear from Luke. So obviously a draw at Rotherham on the opening day, probably a deserved point from what I saw. Mm. Obviously, if anyone's not seen Harry Darling's goal, go and check it out because the way a centre-back wraps his foot around the ball like that and just levers it into the top corner is absolute class isn't it and you know they have got players to watch obviously the one name that comes to mind for me with Swansea is Joe Piro obviously had a really good year last year can score from anywhere do you think he's the one to watch this game yeah I think he he got a similar sort of goal tally in the end to Brereton Diaz which is shows how much how many goals he scored and like you say Harry Darling is a, is a player that I would have loved to have at Rovers if we were linked. I think we had a small link with him just because yeah. he was a player in League One and we're wanting a centre back sort of uh, sort of vibe. But he, he, hearing about what happened in the game and and listening to the different reviews, it it seems like Swansea have almost the same issues that they did last season from the first game because they had seventy four percent possession, but they still had a lack of shots considering how much possession they had. And they really did seem to have a, a soft underbelly in the centre back, centre mid region, which uh, Rotherham, in the end, got a point from. Yeah, and it was you know it was a long throw in that kind of undid them, and hopefully Rovers can make the most of those set pieces yeah, yeah. and balls into the box. Probably, you know, we'll look at the predicted that side, but we've probably got that height in the box this game that you know mm. can get someone on the head. Another player I want to bring up is Mark Lobafemi, obviously heavily linked with Rovers under Mowbray. I was sick of hearing about him. I thought we'd signed him at one point. He missed probably what's going to go down as the sitter of the season within 90 minutes. And although this probably means he'll score on Saturday because it always <laughs> happens against us, can you still see him being a threat? Because good players miss them sitters anyway. We've seen it from our players as well before and we've seen it from some of the best in football. Do you worry yeah. about Obafemi maybe having that strike? He scored last time we played them, obviously, when they beat us. Yeah, I mean, like, he, he, it was a bad miss, wasn't it? Like, it could be the yeah. miss of the season uh, in the first game of the, the campaign. But the cliche thing to say about that is he's in the, the position to get there to score. So, uh, isn't, I mean, he scored against us last time, like you said, and it's, it wouldn't be a, a, a bad bet to put him on again to score against us. Yeah, and the bad thing is, if he gets in that position again, he's not going to miss again, surely. So, we'll have to hope we stop him getting there. Another, you know, I think the former Rover link is always one that we worry about. Matt Grimes in the midfield. I mm. believe he didn't score last year, but he's probably the John Buckley in terms of passing ability and, yeah. you know, the way he can whip the ball around. And then the goalkeeper, Andy Fisher, who I said at the time when he left, I were a bit concerned it would come and bite us and you know, he's done well. I know with Thomas Kaminsky now, but we put up with a year of Christian Walton and, you know, also just having that academy lad in the squad. Do you think either of them two could threaten Rovers? Obviously, Fisher in a defensive aspect, but could he show Rovers that maybe he should have stuck with him? Yeah, but like, it's it's, it's one of those. Is he, is he better than Kaminsky? Like, I don't think... No, he, I don't think he is. So, I don't think we will regret it. The only thing we regret is he could be a good uh, substitute keeper, but how many times do they play in a season? So it probably came to agreement that it was good for everyone. We got money for him. He had to, he got out and played uh, for MK Dons at the time. And like you say, we didn't know he was going to be as good as he is. Um, maybe yourself did, but uh, I, I didn't I didn't actually know anything much of him at the time. But um, Matt Grimes as well. He, I mean, he had that loan season with us, didn't he? When, yeah, that dodgy three months, wasn't it? Yeah, he, I, I can see. I think he had the most passes in the championship last season, so I'm guessing we'll see a lot of the ball um, from himself in the in the game on Saturday. 
Yeah, and then, you know, what we'll do now, we'll have a look into the Swansea opinion. I sat down with Luke from Swanscast, really good Swansea channel. You know, they cover basically what we do, but for their club, Swansea City. So you'll watch the chat here. Luke will give his predictions and then we'll head straight back into our video and give our predicted at time. So as you can see, I'm joined by Luke from Swanscast. Hi, Luke. Thanks for joining us. Hiya. Thanks for having me on. No, it's a pleasure. And just before we start, we'll be uh, I'll be featuring over on the Swans Cast channel as well. So I'll put the link in the description below. You can check that out. Check out everything they do over there. And you know, as we build up to Saturday's game, so we'll start with the first game of the season. Luke, obviously a one-one draw at Swansea. What we what did you make of Swansea that game? And does it go in line with your hopes for the season? Yeah, so we obviously went away to Rotherham in our first game of the season, which is always tricky going up against a team that has come up from the league below. You know, they're going to come up with a bit of um, motivation and and that sort of thing. Coming up from the lower league is always a hard one. But going away from home, I think a draw was always a decent result, especially the first first game of the season. So I was quite happy with how we played and the result. Obviously, you want to get a win, but we didn't lose. And that's something that you can build on then and start pushing forward with the momentum. Yeah, like you say, a club come up, but we have to talk about Michael Obafemi's miss in the second half. Obviously, Rovers, we linked pretty heavily with him last year, and I think we all thought we were going to get him at one point, and he went to Swansea. I think he had an all right year, actually, at Swansea last year, but, I mean, that miss is... <laughs> how he's done it, I'll never know, but yeah, you know, we well, won't dwell on it too much. I mean... Yeah, he had a good year last year, but it was a tale of two halves. His first half of the season he wasn't really in the team, couldn't get couldn't get going, he didn't really feel comfortable. Um, it was a bit of a weird one. They looked at one point maybe he would even leave. And then it just clicked all of a sudden and he started banging in some goals and he started making first team appearances regular. And obviously he's continued there, um, starting the first game of the season with Joel Perot, who played an amazing ball across across the box on the floor to him. And yeah, it was a tap in, but I think he kind of got caught by surprise that it got to him, maybe. And he was, he took it a bit too complacently in a way, like I'll just knock hit the ball and it's going to go in. But it hit the yeah. back of his heel and didn't go in. Basically, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, if that goes in, we win the first game, and that's how that's the margins, isn't it? But it needs to be more clinical going forward. Yeah, I was disappointed. We do uh, a championship fantasy league, and I had him up front in my team, and because I thought he might have a decent year and he does that. So we'll move on anyway. We're, I was just looking at your transfer business in the summer and there's obviously the Russell Martin links there, you know, Harry Darling from MK Dons who scored an incredible goal at Rotherham, if anyone's not seen it. Brilliant strike. Beat the one we scored in our game, definitely, which I think says it all. And then, you know, you lost Flynn Downs to West Ham, which, you know, I think it's a good move for him. Is he a big loss for Swansea this season? Um, he is a big loss. So obviously we got him for a decent price last year. I think it was one point something million. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, he came straight into the first team under Russell Martin and he was a solid feature. He was there every game unless he was injured or had a suspension because I think he did pick up a couple of those. But uh, he did a really good job. And I, I don't think he's irreplaceable. A lot of fans were excited that he went. I don't think he's irreplaceable. For me, he's on a path, obviously, where he's improving. He's gone to West Ham and he'll continue to do that. He did make some mistakes, though, and some people didn't kind of... He, he, he doesn't get acknowledged for doing that, whereas other players who don't play as much if they did the same sort of thing would get called out. So I'd like to point that out because, not to say he's a bad player, but he's not irreplaceable. We've got Joe Allen now and we're hoping he can do a similar job. Obviously, he's not got the same youth on his side in terms of resellability, but then we made like 8 million profit to potentially 10 million profit on Flynn Downs, so that was definitely a good bit of business. We will miss him this year, uh, but I wish him all the best going forward with his time at West Ham. Yeah, I think it's well, I mean, 8 million for every championship club, it's a lot of money, yeah, isn't it? Especially one season. It's, uh, yeah. It's, if someone comes in with 8 million for one of ours, I think you know, they'll be off. And you mentioned Joe Allen and Nathan Wood. Are you happy with the business overall? Do you need anything else this window? Um, I'm happy with what we've got so far because the priority for where we needed to strengthen was definitely in defence. And mm -hmm. that's where most of our signings are. Sorry if you can mm -hmm. hear the, uh, the loud cars outside. Um, but we do 
still need perhaps one more player as a minimum, and that is in right back position. We're not really covered there. Um, currently, we're playing Joe Latabodia right back, and he's he's not a right back. He's a centre back by trade, but like he's a decent player, uh, sort of all round. Uh, a versatile sort of player, but I don't really think he masters any role. He's quite short for a centre back, but then he's not really quick enough or good enough on the ball to play wing backs, and he, that's what he covers sometimes. So perhaps a weakness for you guys to exploit uh, if he's covering right back again this week. But for us, it's somewhere that we really need to sort out because we signed Sorilo, Sorinola, as you said. I thought he could play right back. I know he's predominantly a left back, but. He's been starting left backs, which put Ryan Manning on the bench, who was our other left back. So two two players covering that position. The other side then we're using the centre back still. So it's not good enough. Uh it was this problem for us last season. We fixed it with two loan sign ins who had half the season each in Led and um, Christie. But if one of those got injured, we were short. Um and we're short again this season. So we need to address that. Yeah, so we'll just move on to looking at Saturday's game. Obviously, I asked you for your predicted 11. You went with the same team that started the Rotherham game. Andy Fisher in there, one that Rovers fans are quite intrigued by because he was a young lad at Rovers, never really got his chance like young keepers do. It's not often they get the chance. And he left for MK Duns and then obviously the Russell Martin link. How's Andy Fisher been for you? Because from what I can see, he's you know been a good goalkeeper since he signed. Yeah, so he's very much Russell Martin's goalkeeper. He brought him in uh, in January. Definitely signed him for his style of play with past experience of working together, that sort of thing. He hasn't convinced all the fans, though. But then I don't think any of our recent keepers since Lucas Fabianski have really done that. Even Freddie Woodman had his uh, naysayers. But um, for me, he's been he's been a solid keeper, OK? He, he's had a pre-season now to work with the team and that should only help him boost his confidence. Because as much as... He has made some errors and there's been some issues with some of the stuff at the back. I think a lot of where the keepers get exposed is when your back line isn't performing as expected. And we definitely had that last year, as I've already touched on. So now we've kind of tried recruiting there and making that a bit better. I'm hoping that we'll see a little bit better from Andy Fisher because if he's under less pressure with players charging him down and all that sort of stuff, you know, he's going to have the more time to get confident, get comfortable in the team. And he had a really good game against Rotherham, actually made some really good saves. Uh, it's just distribution sometimes can be a bit off, but um, otherwise, for a young keeper, he's definitely heading in the right right direction. And then you have your back three of Wood, Norton, Darling, you mentioned Latty there on the right, Sorry, on the left, Jeff Fulton and Captain Matt Grimes, another former Rover, who we've kind of kept an eye on, and then front for you, I think, to really some for uh, really strong front for you, Patterson, Piro, and Obafemi. Obviously, you mentioned Obafemi. What's Joe Piro like? Because obviously, he was the name that everyone was speaking about from Swansea last year. You know, really strong uh, goal scorer. He scored some really good goals as well. Do you think yeah. he's going to be a Swansea player come the end of this season? Let's get to the end of this transfer window first because it's still yeah. open. Uh, it's gone a bit quiet again. There was interest from Brighton. Uh, last week, I think, but apparently they've come out and said, oh, oh it's, it's been hashed and they're not actually interested in looking at him. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, fingers crossed, end of the transfer window, he's still here. And I think our season heavily relies on him. And the, the problem we're getting at this stage is now if he does get sold, because we all thought he was going to go, but if he gets sold at this point, how would you replace him? It's so difficult yeah. to replace him now. Um, and that's why his fight has got to stay. Because if he stays, we're going to be, I think, challenging playoffs maybe outside just outside or challenging for the playoffs if he goes we're dropping down to pit table i think uh he's so prolific he's clinical he's one of the best finishers i've ever seen on the ball and it's obviously this is championship level he reminds me a lot of michu i don't know if you remember him from from back in the Premier yeah. League. um but his left foot is outstanding and he scores most of his goals actually from outside of the box i've had a 20 goal season for uh, that sort of trait it's quite impressive and if you did see the highlights from the rotherham game He's also quite nifty on his feet, um, quite skillful, dribbling the ball and taking players on in tight areas as well, where he can sort of wriggle away from a couple of defenders. So he's so important to us. I just hope that we can keep him for the rest of the season. But beyond this season, I think the only way he stays at Swansea longer is if we go up. Yeah, that's fair enough. I've seen a bit of him through the uh, EFL highlights and he always seems to score a good goal. So 
I've just got two questions left for you. So the first one is, what do you think of Rovers? Obviously, as a team, you want to see, I doubt you'll listen anything, or maybe just a little bit of John Dahl Thomas and Rovers, but what do you make of some of the plays? Is there anyone that stands out when you think of Blackman? Um, so I think the classic one from the last couple of years, and unless I have missed something, I think he's still there. Is Bradley Dack still with you guys? Yeah, he's had a bit of injury issues. I was going to say. He didn't play on Saturday. He's, um, he's the, one of the ones that has been one to watch for a couple of years, but his injury record is probably what's let you guys down a little bit in terms of how well you can do in a full season, maybe even last year. And obviously yeah. then the other one, Ben Brereton Diaz, which I saw he was getting linked around, but he hasn't left you either as far as I'm aware. He's kind of a bit like the P-Roll situation that if he leaves now, you know, how do you replace him? Everyone knows you have money, yeah. don't they, if you sell him and then you're going to die. I think he will go, I think he'll play Saturday, but I don't think he'll be here come the end of the window. So yeah. the final one is predictions. I know some people don't like doing it. I know it's hard, but how do you think Saturday's game will go on? What score do you think it'll be? Oh, it's a difficult one because out of the new guys who signed, and you just asked that, like, I'm not 100% sure about many of your new, your new players that you've got. Um, and in our prediction table, I think we had you maybe in the lower half of the table or somewhere near the yeah. middle. But that was more because I think you had such a good start of last season and it tailed off towards the end. Uh, you got a new manager in, I believe. So I kind of thought maybe a bit of a transition season, get up and running, you know, get things going. So we're at home. I have to back us. If we're going to try and push on to actually be successful this season and not going to do all the playoffs, I have to back us to get a win here. But not like, I don't think it'd be like a comfortable win. I think maybe a one goal swing, maybe a one nil or a two one to Swansea. But I could easily see it also going against us. You know, you've got some good players there. You've got one or two former Swans, I think. Ryan Hedges is there. He came from our yeah. academy. So, um, we love to have our ex players score against us, so it wouldn't uh, surprise me one bit if he gets in the score sheet uh, on Saturday. Yeah, he made his debut for us actually at Swansea last yeah. time round. That was his first game for us. I think with Rovers, I think most of the fan base feels a point would be good. I don't, I'm not sure if we've ever won since you moved to the Liberty. I don't think we've won in a league game, so that's obviously. I don't know how you didn't win last point. time, I'll be honest, but there we are. No, neither do I. And not again, not by Femi scored that one just after we've been linked with him. So we'll see how the game goes. Obviously, like I mentioned before, I'll be heading over to Swan's Cash Channel. I'll be doing something on there. The link will be down below. But I'd just like to thank Luke for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure to chat to you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. We'll head back into the preview now and we'll look at our predictions for Saturday. And there we have it. A massive thank you to Luke for joining us. Obviously, Go and check out my chat on their channel, you know, that I mentioned in the video. I've gone over there and spoke about Rovers, who to watch. Basically a, a mirror of that one, but I was answering the questions. So, Dom, it's time for predicted 11s. I'll give you Swansea's that Luke's given the video, but we'll just go over it again. So, Andy Fisher in there, Nathan Wood, signed for Middlesbrough, uh, Cal Norton and Harry Darling at centre-backs, uh, Letty there on right-back, sorry, all the left-back who were linked with Rovers, a bit over the summer as well. Uh, Fulton and Captain Matt Grimes in the midfield and then a front three of Patterson, Obafemi and Piros. So we mentioned their key players. Let's have a look at Rovers. So this is what we've come to together as not what we want necessarily, but what the manager wants. We might still want this, but this is what we think we'll go with. So we've gone for, uh, as you'll see on your screen, Kaminsky in there, Britain, Ayala, Wharton, Pickering, Travis and Buckley, I think they're the definite starters, aren't they, Dom? Yeah. And then, uh, Dolan, Hedges, Brereton, Diaz and Gallagher. So, obviously, if we look at what the QPR team was, Jack Vale out of the squad and Dolan in with Gallagher moving up front. But, obviously, there's that fluid front four. Would you be confident with that front four getting, you know, the goals we need? Because we can't rely on Lewis Travis to whip another one in, can we? <laughs> No, obviously, yeah, I'm fully confident of that team. It's a team that we're thinking that Swansea will be on the ball a lot more, so we will need uh, more of a runner in the in the in the front four. And then uh, it, Vale is obviously the easy one to take out of there. It seems like what we've discussed. 
previous to this uh, video that Vale was probably the easiest one to take out just because he's the, the new one and uh, Dolan came on. So that's the uh, easy change for us, isn't it? Yeah, I think what we could see, although I think the Carter injury affects this, is the back five. I think if Carter were fit, we might have gone for a back five here. And, yeah. you know, because you can see Thomas and Wright to the that in pre season. And also, that was my more tactics that you played. You know, a five at the back when you were playing Chelsea in Europe and Juventus, they played and yeah. all that. So maybe that's something we'll see when the centre back comes in. But we're expecting a back four here, aren't we? Yeah. I think it's yeah. got a chance of doing some of that. And if Danny Ayala stays fit all game, your chances of winning are much improved, I think. And I think we'll say that 30 times this season, won't we? That if Ayala's <laughs> in, we'll do it. But we know what it's like. <laughs> Is there anyone that maybe could be in that team that you were wanting? You know, we mentioned Sammy Smadich. You know, where would he fit in that four? Who would you take out of that four if he was going to play? I think Smodix would probably change for Hedges. Uh, he had a great, he had a good game uh, uh, last weekend, but um, I feel like Gallagher and Diaz have a bit more of a um, in the key moments. They will provide uh, sort of a feeling to them. Uh, obviously, Bradley Dak as well on the bench. You can't. Uh, hide away from him, can you? <laughs> Even though there's reports about him, you know, it's like they were all rumours, weren't they? Uh, yeah. But I feel like at the minute, Dak is just not quite fit enough to play a full game. So he, he, he could easily come on off the bench as well. I think he just, with Dak, he's going to need time, isn't he? As much yeah. as we'd, we all want him to play and mm. he gets in everyone's team when he's fit, but this pressing formation doesn't suit him as much as what we played on the Mowbray and that's yeah. not discounting his ability or anything it's just we've got to be realistic we can't ask Bradley Dyke to run for 90 minutes yeah, keep yeah. pressing when he's not played a proper 90 minutes for a long time so my favourite part of the show maybe you're not maybe not your favourite part here Dom but the predictions yeah. so we'll start with last week obviously we set up a prediction league last week we'll explain how you can enter that soon but all Just right. to look at the table, I said we'd cover it every game, this table, and we'd run through. So well done to Adam Ronan, Byron Arts, Ellis Garner, Jake Brereton, yes, Jake Brereton, and Ollie James for the five people who got the score right the other day. You can see myself on there with two, so I got the correct result, but I think I went 2-1 uh, Rovers, and you can see Matt on there, we went 3-2 Rovers. So well done to everyone, and I think there were... 36 comments and I think there's 32 people there who got something right or nice. a pat on the back if you got it you've got to catch up to the five now yeah that's a really good uh, percentage of people getting it right so I think we'll see it this season won't we if any games are at home I think most people will back us to win and mm. you've got to get them scorers right haven't you really so just a note on how to enter before me and Dom give our prediction so each previous show all you do is comment below try and keep the same YouTube name as well because the main thing is, if you keep changing YouTube names, I won't be able to keep track of how many points you've got all season. <laughs> uh, you can predict, just in case anyone didn't know, you can predict the scorers for both sides. So if you say 4-1 okay. okay. Rovers, you can pick Albafemi to score and I'll give you points if Albafemi does bag for Swansea. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned, five people got it right. That's why they're on five there. So you get five points for the correct score. Two points for the correct results. So say you said Rovers 2-0 QPR last week and it ended 1-0. You'd have got the correct result, but not the correct score. So you'd only get two points rather than five. Yeah. And if you do get the correct score, you get two points for every score you get right. So if you said Rovers 3-0 and Swan... So Rovers beat Swansea 3-0 and you pick Gallagher, Brereton and Dolan and all three score, you'd end up with 11 points. So it's a real chance to get ahead yeah. of each other, we'll cover it every week. So, Dom, I'll let you go first. Score prediction Saturday and your scorers, and you'll go on the table as well if you're right. Okay, I hope I'm going to go on the table then. Uh, well, I'm going to, you know, it's a tough ground to go to, and, it, you know, it's a long way to go it, just in general. So, I mean, it's more of hope than uh, proper prediction. So, I'm going to go over 1-1. One, one. Uh, I think... I think uh, I don't think Swansea are quite the team that everyone predicts this season. Um, but I'm going to go with Gallagher and Piro as the scorers. No, that's what I put on my prediction. But I've got a bit of a history on this channel of always backing us to win. 
regardless of who we're playing. So I'll go for a 2 1 Rovers. I'll go. Yeah. Who shall we go for? A 2 1 Rovers. I'll go. Kaminsky. Hedges again. <laughs> Maybe not Kaminsky this time. I'll put him in end of season. <laughs> uh, Hedges against his old club. And. Sammy Smoddits, I'll go for a goal off the bench for his debut. And then for Swansea, I'll go Obafemi because I've been yeah. laughing at that miss all week. And that yeah, means he's going to put it in the net. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where we end for the preview show. It's been a nice, you know, 25 minutes or so. Don't forget, get your entry in the comments. You can go in as many as you want all season. You can go in as little as you want. But obviously, if you're in everyone, you've got a chance of doing it. We'll do it for the cup game as well. So don't miss the cup previews because they're essential as well to getting points on the table. But keep the same username or you can put your Twitter handle. You know, if you want to do it as Twitter, I'm happy to do that, whichever's best. But for now, you've got to catch up to Adam, Byron, Ellis, Jake and Ollie. So we'll see how you go. But thank you for joining us. Thanks for being on again, Dom. It's, uh, I feel like we've not been aware this week with all the transfer uh, yeah. names. Uh, it's, I mean, it's good to talk about Rob, isn't it? I'm not complaining. Yeah, it is. And if you haven't seen any of them transfer windows, I should have mentioned them before. <laughs> Just go on the channel. We've got uh, the reaction to semi semantics which we did live. We yeah. both rushed back to our laptops yeah. to record it. Uh, the reaction to Tyler Morton that Matt Jordison did. The low down on semi semantics I sat down with a Peterborough fan. I know that's not gone down too well in terms of his opinions, but end of the day, they are just his opinions on it. And also the live show we did, me, Dom and Elliot from Lanks Live ran through every transfer question people wanted, ran through all the signings, all the loans. So thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure being back. We'll have Jared's watch along at the Swansea game. That'll be at half two Saturday. There'll be a reaction video up. I'm not too sure when, because obviously I'll be travelling. So mm -hmm. that might be a bit hard to get out. But there will be a reaction video up this weekend of just our take on the game. Plenty more to come. It's coming Wednesday, Saturday now for the next few weeks. So we'll have that covered. We'll be way down to the bones. But we enjoyed doing it. It's been a pleasure having you on. And we'll see you again soon for a new video.